Weak markets appear everywhere now. The bubbles don't appear in sync, nor in parallel. They appear in a seemingly dysfunctional, out-of-order, dirty mess, all orchestrated by the globalist elite, methodically planning our demise. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we will talk about China's free fall and what they are discussing in this Bloomberg article, Hong Kong's property market being in free fall and the credit expansion in Southeast Asia, emerging markets will unravel. That's right. They are discussing this today. I'm going to bring it to you right here. So many other things to connect into this. Hong Kong's in a worse position than it was prior to the 97 crisis today. Now, is Kyle Bass necessarily you know, the one source, the one-stop shop for all of our information? No, absolutely not. But it's just interesting to see what he has to say. So let's take it for what it is. Right here, he said the credit in Asian emerging markets has grown recklessly, citing Malaysia and Thailand. What happened during the Asian crisis back in the 90s? Well, you had all this hot money moving into these countries. It sent the currencies themselves completely wild. The stock markets were going crazy. Money was flowing in when it was not justified at all. And guess what? It crashed. Hong Kong's property prices have declined and sales are hovering near 25-year lows as the city grapples with the repercussions of a slowing Chinese economy. Something, in fact, that is still being discussed as a conspiracy theory. Okay? Here's Bloomberg talking about the slowing Chinese economy. We have the Chinese actually coming out and saying that we expect the uh, actual growth to decline it has declined the growth that is not the contraction that's occurring and yet some people still don't want to believe it china is going to grow in the future there's going going to be a lot of growth but along the way there will be bumps in the road people can't handle that but that's okay home prices have dropped about 13 percent from a peak in september according to the data compiled so that's starting to really snowball and that is an issue that people are simply ignoring then we turn over to the west as you look at this expensive apartments are sitting idle for roughly 90 days before being sold the longest time on the market since january 2013 and this right here talking about the new york real estate so there is a slowdown particularly in the high-end uh, properties this is out of cnbc by the way to be clear, the slowdown just isn't in New York. Nationwide existing home sales were down 7.1% according to the NAR. And while new home sales overall rose, the gains were confined to one region, and that is the West. And then it goes on. But basically what you can see by this is that housing prices are still up in many areas, yet the home sales are down. So we sort of have to realize that's a lagging thing, a lagging effect is now people, when they realize that they have more and more choices, the prices can be at least tapering off, perhaps coming down. But of course, with interest rates being so low, it's really difficult to, what to expect. Okay, now if you look at this, that's not 1.9 dollars there that's uh 1.9 trillion dollars that's right fiscal year 2016 taxes set a record through april and you're looking at fed still running a deficit of what is that 354 billion dollars 355 billion dollars right here yet they brought in two trillion dollars in taxes and then you always have individuals, whether it's just individuals, let's say, and they will make every excuse in the book why, look, the taxes have to go to this place and that place, they have to build the roads, they have to build this and that. Look, the majority of the taxes are being squandered. And I've covered that here. I'm sure you've seen documents yourself, but just... Go to a search engine, type in waste watch, and you can see all of the tax money literally being wasted. It's all garbage. Two trillion. I wouldn't be surprised if, I mean, I, I don't want to make any estimations, but at least three quarters of it is not being used properly. And that's 
the way I see it. You know, we can argue even more than that, but I'm being conservative. I would say probably three quarters of it. I mean, the government can be run so much more efficiently, but of course it's not. That's the purpose of a government is to run inefficient. All right, let's look at this. You look at the GDP for the US, you see it is nearing $17 trillion. What is the true value, however, because, you know, the short definition of the GDP is, the, of course, the gross domestic product, meaning essentially the value of any particular nation. Is it really $17 trillion in the US? Is that really what it's worth? What about the amount of debt that that particular nation is in? That's not factored in at all. Another note that I wanted to make is the light green line, if you can't see it there, that's China. Their growth, their GDP growth has been really substantial since, let's say, the year 2000 or so. And of course, since the financial crisis, really, their growth has been continuously up and up and up. And while that should be seen as a good thing, I think that it is a little bit risky to grow too fast. You want slow and steady growth over the years. And I don't see that coming with China. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's actually good to have a cooling off with any stock market or bond market or anything else. You want corrections because then you feel safer having your money within those investments. So you're looking at the president of Turkey pushing out the prime minister he himself had handpicked seemingly to clear his way towards the ultra meld one-man rule that he has sought since moved from the premiership to Turkey's presidency two years ago. But basically what we're looking at here is the battle between individuals and not heads of state, but in between the governments and those who control the governments. The individuals are going to lose out because of this. That's for sure. I mean, you look at all of these coups that have taken place whether it's in the Middle East, whether it is in South America, it doesn't matter. When you have a takeover, you know, in most cases, things get worse for the people. It's just the way it is. It's not allowed to take place if it isn't going to be better for the globalist elite. They're not going to let it happen unless they are able to profit or basically take advantage of. That's just the way it is. So this will be interesting to see where this turns. And just a quick note here, Saudi Arabia is confident nothing in the secret 28-page section of the U.S. Congressional Report on September 11th attacks implicates its leaders. Of course not, because if it does, there's going to be hell to pay. That's right. Let's see where this goes. I'm, I'm not really sure what we what to expect here. I think it's going to be a lot of redacted information, or perhaps it's going to be a whitewash, or it's not even going to be the real 28 pages. Let's see. And this right here, again, robots and automation taking over jobs. The experiment the AI performed was the creation of a Bose-Einstein condensate, a hypercold gas, and that one three physicists, a Nobel Prize in 2001. And in fact, the robot did it better than the people. See, they took it to a certain point, uh, a micro Kelvin, one micro Kelvin. It's very close to absolute zero in temperature. And they let the artificial intelligence take it from there in order to find out how to do it even better. So they actually went beyond what the Nobel Prize winners got and actually surpassed that. And that's what's very interesting because the robot, the AI, is actually, in fact, able to display so many different types of jobs. It's not just factory workers. It's not just taxi drivers. We're looking at every single type of jobs that is being threatened by this. I understand, again, I understand this could be very beneficial. I'm sure that AI, I'm sure that robotics is going to be excellent. It's going to be very beneficial in many different ways. But I just need to highlight the dangers that people in the mainstream media are not pointing out. If you found this video informative, 
please give me a thumbs up. Those thumbs up help to take this video to the top of the search rankings in YouTube and also on Google. That helps me out as well. Last but not least, if you found this video informative, I know you will find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. If you want to flip through it, just head over to Amazon. They have a look inside feature, which allows you to flip through the pages of the book and see if you like it. Take care.